Good morning, life in Florida. Well, I'm here in front of this beautiful 1933 Woody here at the Elliott Museum. We're gonna take a little tour here and show you a lot of these beautiful cars and things here. And this car, you can get inside. Look at this, this is just so cool. I gotta jump inside. I gotta jump inside, folks. Oh, look at this. This is amazing. So hang with me and let's check it out. Well, folks, this is Jana. Good morning. And she's gonna tell us a little bit about this car right here. It's kind of funky looking, isn't it? And it's because it's old. Uh-huh. It's a 1947 Curtis Craft Midget race car. Wow. And I'm not a car person, so my first big question is, why is one tire littler than the other three? Yeah, that is something, huh? And that was to balance as it's going around the racetrack. It's to help maintain the balance. Wow. And my second thought, and these are girly thoughts, I guess, I thought Downton Abbey, how dangerous it would have been, just like the, in the episode of Downton Abbey where a race car that was totally open crashed and mm -hmm. the people were killed. Can you imagine? These are what's called the JDMs, uh -huh. ja Japanese domestic market cars, mostly from the 90s. They were sold primarily in Japan and not shipped abroad, but now we have them here and they don't look like they're from the 90s. This is the 55 Ford Thunderbird Convertible. Look at this. Well, here's the man, Sterling Elliott. And there's some information here about him. The Elliott story. Meet the family. This really is something to see. So when you're in Florida, especially when you're down in the Stewart area, you gotta come by here and check out the Elliott Museum. Look at this, just amazing. Here's how the information at the start of the Elliott Museum. So Jana, this is a 1912 Ford Model T Speedster. This two-seat speedster was the sports car of its day, but probably the most interesting thing about it is its windshield, and it's called a monocle windshield. I feel sorry for the person in the passenger seat if there's lots of bugs, <laughs> but it's a fun car. It's a four-cylinder engine, 20 horsepower, and the original price in 1912 was $590. Wow, what would it be valued at today? That's too much math for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is great. Unbelievable. And look at the rest of this place, folks. Look at this. I mean, it's just amazing. And I'm really liking this 1931 Ford model AA service car tow truck. Can you imagine this tow truck coming to pick you up today, isn't that something? What a beautiful vehicle. Look at this, folks. This is a replica of the first hydroplane that was invented and created by Hugh Willoughby. Hugh Willoughby actually worked on Orville and Wilbur Wright's plane, got zero credit for it, and they parted ways because Hugh Willoughby thought it was safer to land on water. Wow. So between 1900 and 1910, Hugh Willoughby lived on the south end of Sewell's Point and they were making airplane parts for his airplane. Very nice. So we're here in the garage and look at some of these vehicles. This is just so amazing. You want cars, folks? You want great vehicles? This is the place. So Jim, what can you tell us about this vehicle here? So what we have here is a 1941 Lincoln Continental convertible. Mm -hmm. The history behind this particular car is in the late 1930s, Essel Ford had a prototype of this car made and uh, sent to his winter home in Florida. The prototype was such a hit with his neighbors and friends, he decided to put the car in production, and this is what the production car looks like. Super nice. It has some pretty unique features from 1941. It has push button doors. Uh huh. Okay. Oh, look at that. Very, which is very 
rare for that uh -huh. time period. It has a steering lock and a steering wheel. And it has a very unique starting procedure. Normally, to start the car, you put the key in, you turn it to the right, or you turn it to the left. For this particular car model, you have to put the key in, you turn it 180 degrees to the left, then you pull the key and the ignition module out towards you about a half inch, and that connects it to the starting system. Fantastic. Wow. What year, what year is this vehicle? 1941. 1941. It also has a very unique engine. Uh, Ford put the top of the line engine in this car. It's a uh, V12 flathead engine. Look at that. Oh my God. Beautiful. Most engines this time period were either, were either flathead V8s or flathead four-cylinder engines. Uh, Henry, uh, Etzel Ford put the V12 in here, uh, more for prestige. Uh, it's 120 horsepower, three-speed manual transmission. Uh, this is a running and driving car. Uh, we took it to Mar-a-Lago two years ago, or last year, and uh, we took a Best Free War Classic. Fantastic. Well, folks, I'm having an amazing time here at the Elliott Museum in Stewart, Florida. Unbelievable place. The people here are fantastic, great, as you can see. And they even have a baseball gallery and art. But I'm focusing on the cars. The lift is going up for the uh, 1907 Maxwell. That is so cool. Look at those. Look at that. How many cars are together? There's uh, 54 back here. I hope that cop don't pull me over anymore. <laughs> <laughs> the Crown Vic. I bet your car now could go faster. I'm sure it can. <laughs> Look at that move down there to pick up the vehicle. What I think we should do for the Crown Vic is have a, a little stand with a mirror right here. Yeah. So you're looking there and you see the Crown Vic coming behind you. That's yeah. right. <laughs> that would be great. That would be appropriate. Uh, This is so amazing. Look at that, folks. Look at that beautiful vehicle, 1907 Maxwell HR. Isn't that something? And really quite ingenious the way it works. Like well, look at that off. beautiful vehicle. The inner car brought the car in and lower it down on the turntable. Actually, 1907 yeah, Maxwell HP touring car. car. This movement is on charging plate, keeping the batteries charged up, so it's ready to go to take the car back to the next one. Wow, okay, so it, it's, it's, it's all electric, everything, no hydraulics. Anyway. Well, the, the lift mechanism is hydraulic. Okay. Uh, it's all DC uh, motor driven for the car and the movement. 
the lift is high voltage. The lift motor is on top. Okay. So it's a little yeah. bit of everything. Oh, okay. Little bit yeah, it's got it's multiple. Fire. But all it does is it clicks onto the, to the cables and then it goes up. Yeah, it just latches into place. Matter of fact, that's about the only sound you'll hear is when the mechanism moves into place, the locking pins that lock it into place to make sure, yeah. All, all are, are your cars actually tied down to the plate, or are some of them just sitting on air emergency brake? Some of them are, ju are just in. in so it most, of, most of the, like, a lot of the old, really old ones are on uh, jacks. Just save the robber <laughs> and the screws. And then we've got the safety wires under most of them. There's a couple of them that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The I tried to order those kind of jacks for my wife, you know, so gravity didn't take effect. Well, Jim, what can you tell us about this fire truck? This is a uh, 1934 double A. Fire truck double A indicates it's a commercial vehicle. The difference between double A and A, and I have an A next to me, the same engine. Both of these vehicles have the same engine, but the double A has a four speed transmission and the A has a three speed transmission. Also, the double A, being a commercial vehicle, it has heavy duty, heavier duty suspension, brakes, and cooling. Mm -hmm. Ford made the chassis and then they sent the chassis out to a coach builder. Who would build the fire truck engine? The double A's of uh, commercial vehicles were used for fire trucks, dump trucks, pay wagons, um, purses, and, and just overall commercial vehicles. Nice. Running and driving vehicle, uh, we take it out for parades and special occasions. It's a beautiful, beautiful vehicle, that's for sure. This is Dina. Yes. And we got uh, Scott here and Michael. They're willing to go on camera for you guys. And an exorcist here with some therapy. Yeah, I thought I would. I thought. The devil out of these men. I thought that's what you were going to do to me. Get the devil out of me. Pretty soon the women will be coming in. <laughs> I can't believe that makes that sound. But oh, no Isn't that, that amazing? I mean, you do. You think of a dong, you just think of. Yeah, you would, you would think it'd be bomb. Right. Oh, it's, a, it's a stick itself that makes the thumb. Is it? It's, that hits it. So he's got different, different sticks, cut. Right, that make... That make different... That vibrate different thumb, differently. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it is something else. Now, what's this supposed to do? Is this supposed to give us some blessings? Healing. Relax you. Healing, relax. relax. You. This is like sound... This is like a massage with sound. Uh, we're visiting this guy who's here from here. You're both from Long Island? Uh, I'm from uh, he's, he's from here. So you're all together right now. And what's your first name? The one that just walked in? I'm Chris from LA. Chris? The YouTube channel you're on is Life in Florida. Are you on YouTube for real? Yeah, I got a channel and I'm building the channel and uh, uh, fe channel. featuring you guys Come here. In, kids. My channel is. Come on in. Oh, really? You have a channel too? Just don't trip on this. Yes, I do have a channel. Okay, great. We're going to go from another angle over here. Look at this. People are coming in. So you can send that to me, Pardon? Well, you can, you can check it out on YouTube. Just I'll give you a card. Yeah, okay. You can, you can see it for yourself, yeah. In fact, give me your uh, channel. I'll help to promote you. Sure, that'd be great. It's my first and last name. Okay. Oh my God! Look at this. So you see this? Wow. Based on the on the laws of vibration, we all have our own vibration, our own frequency, and we have a lot of things that take us out of tune. Our bodies are instruments, and I will talk, but I can answer questions afterwards. So you can feel just by pulling the light sound, already shifting your nervous system.
Uh, it doesn't really. It doesn't have. And on the inside, you have more of a chance. It's, it's right. a, uh, it's a um, more that, polished yeah. crystal on the inside, and oh. it can break. It can break right. on the inside. Oh, the outside right. is more of a rougher edge, yeah, yeah. so it can stick to the mallet. Mm -hmm. And depending on the bowls, they, they like different mallets. They sound better depending on what you want to do. Like any other instrument, you know. It's, yeah. The gong yeah, has right. like 15 mallets right now, you know, depending on what you want to. The, and the gong, you know, the healing part is deep tissue, deep bone healing, believe it or not, you know. And I had a gentleman here from Pittsburgh with 40 gongs. It's called a gong bath. And it's it's, it's a, also a um, physical performance and a layback. You know, you can watch him, you can lay back, it's two hours. So he, he travels, and when he comes to Florida, he always lands here. So he's a great asset. He's fantastic. But you only work here? Yourself? No, I don't travel. Your... I travel as well. You what know, do you I do? travel as well. But I, I'm here now. People come to me, and the word is out. Uh, the uh, the uh, tourism, the uh, tourism. Uh, so what do they call it? The gong show? No, it's a gong bath. You know, you have to, you have to be precise. The gong bath. Yeah, it's a gong bath. This is called, you know, sound therapy, sound healing, sound vibration, sound medicine. There's so many synonymous, and I do private events as well, like separate one person up to, mm. I'd say six. Tonight I have 16. What you see is 16 people. If I move the table out and move this a little closer, I can put 18, but that would be the max. Because I like to walk around people with instruments. I like to give them the full, the full journey, you know. And um, so yeah. So again, so it's just yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you for walking. Well, I'm gonna tell you something. Dina is amazing. That is an amazing experience. And you got to come down here to the Elliott Museum. Now I'm going to go for lunch, and they got a little place out here. They got a tiki hut, and they got a little place called Philly South. Supposedly they have great food here and great Philly cheesesteaks, and I think I'm going to have one of those Philly cheesesteaks. So let's check it out. Here's a look at the menu. Well, look at this. I got the Philly cheese special and a Diet Coke here for lunch at Philly Down South. Looks great. Well, hope you've enjoyed this short video. So much to do and see here at the Elliott Museum. You got to get down here to Stewart, Florida. Look at all these beautiful cars. And they've got a baseball gallery. They've got art. they got so much going on down here. Friendly people, knowledgeable people, a great time, great place. You got to get down to the Elliott Museum here in Stewart, Florida. Meanwhile, I'm thinking about taking this little red car right here home and leaving my truck because I need something stylish. I need something sexy. And I think that car just might do it. So meanwhile, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please give me a subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and watch for more videos. So be happy, be healthy, take care of yourself, and guess what? We will see you soon.